If you want to experience the very latest in technology and gadgets, well stay tuned to the first ever episode of The Geek Show. Welcome to this week's tech news. And to kick things off, Nikon are rumoured to be readying their new D800 digital SLR, supposedly sporting a 36 megapixel sensor. No news on price yet, but keep your eyes peeled on the channel for this one. And the rest of the news has been really filled with mobile phone news. First up, HTC have launched two new Windows Phone 7.5, that's running the latest Mango operating system mobile phones. And they come in the form of the HTC Radar and the massive HTC Titan. Now the Titan sports a 4.7 inch touchscreen and a 1.5 gigahertz processor. Staying with HTC, they have also launched their latest Android mobile phone. This comes in the form of the HTC Sensation XE. It comes with Beats by Dre Diddy headphones and a 1.5 GHz dual-core processor. The rest of the news has been taken over by Apple, who launched a slew of new products just yesterday. These include a new iPod Touch with an A5 dual-core processor in there for improved gaming performance, a new range of iPod Nanos, the same colours, but they now sport bigger icons and a whole new range of clock faces, including a Mickey Mouse clock face. I wonder where they got that one from. And then they moved on to launch the iPhone 4S. Yes, I said 4S. We were all expecting the iPhone 5. Instead, we got an iPhone 4S, which looks identical to the iPhone 4. All of the changes have happened on the inside really with a new 8 megapixel camera, 1080p full HD video recording and the A5 dual core processor. We also get something called Siri where we can talk to our phone, a personal digital assistant which is going to really help us get the most out of our new iPhone. The iPhone 4S is going to be available to order on October the 7th and in our hands on October the 14th. So that's it for this week's news. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Today I want to talk to you about different types of camera, and they fit into different categories depending on their features and their size. Now in front of me, I've got three different categories of camera. On the right here, I've got a compact camera and a micro four thirds camera. Now the compact camera, this particular one is from Canon, is ideal for portability. It's very small in size. They often have some sort of zoom lens that comes out the front of the camera and they're just ideal for putting in your bag, taking with you wherever you're going for going on holiday. They've typically got a small size screen on the back. You can get sort of slightly larger compact cameras and they range from anywhere from about sort of 30 to 40 pounds up to about two or 300 pounds for one with lots and lots of features. And then this second category here is micro four thirds. Now there is another category that fits in between these two and that's called a bridge camera. Now a bridge camera is typically around this sort of size. It has a large zoom lens on it, but you cannot change the lenses. So bridge cameras are sort of uh, flailing a little bit, little bit in their popularity. But looking at this micro four thirds camera, this has quite a compact body. It's not as small as this one here, but you have got the ability of changing lenses. And you might want to change the lens from a bigger zoom lens like this to a smaller compact zoom lens like this one. And it's extremely easy to do. and means that you can uh, customize your camera for the particular use that you're gonna be using on that particular day. It makes them very uh, user friendly and very customizable as well. This particular lens here, for example, is a 40 to 150 millimeter zoom lens. So that's got a very long reach. But if I was going on a walkabout, maybe doing some street photography, then this 14 to 42 millimeter lens I've just put on the body here is extremely good for that. It means I've got a very compact unit and something that's got a lot of manual features as well. 
Now this third category of camera is the digital SLR, often referred to as a DSLR as well. This particular one is a Nikon D5100, so it's a, a slightly smaller body or slightly more compact body than some DSLRs have. Now the advantage of DSLRs are very similar to the Micro Four Thirds cameras in the fact that you could swap the lenses out. So on this camera at the moment I've got a 16 to 85 millimeter zoom lens and I could swap that out for this 35 millimeter fixed focal length lens which is also referred to as a prime lens. Now the advantage of doing that is that this is a lot better performer in low light situations. But that said this 16 to 85 millimeter lens is a superb performer too. Now the body itself, when you're looking at DSLR lenses, is very comfortable to hold. It's got a nice large hand grip. And because this is a bigger bodied camera, more often than not, digital SLRs have larger sensors. And that should result in a lot less noise on your photos. They also have articulated screens on a lot of the models and are just a pleasure to use. So as you can see, digital cameras come in all different shapes and sizes and they're going to be suited to different people's requirements. Now for me personally, I like to have a digital SLR camera, so a full-size camera to take with me to things like weddings, special events, maybe concerts, somewhere where I know I'm going to be taking a lot of photos. And then the rest of the time, I carry around a compact camera wherever I go, something that's nice and easy to slip into a pocket or a bag. Now meeting somewhere in the middle ground are these Micro Four Thirds cameras and this might be the choice for you because it gives you DSLR type handling, results almost the same as a full size digital SLR but in a much more compact package. The best advice I can give you is if you enjoy photography and taking photos then buy the best that your budget will afford and get out there and start capturing those magic moments. So this is the Dyson Hot, well actually it's the product box, I've got the product hiding behind here for a little while longer, but I just want to give you a brief history about how I found out about Dyson and started using their products. When I got my first house, or flat as it was then, I bought the cheapest vacuum cleaner I could. It was all I could afford and needless to say it went wrong after a very short period of time. Then I spent a little bit more on a vacuum. It still didn't have the sucking power that I needed. It would hoover up fine, but it just would not give me the power to get my carpets really clean. So I switched over on my third purchase, I think it was, to a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and they are fantastic. I would actually never buy another brand of vacuum cleaner again. And then about a year and a half ago, Dyson brought out a fan, and it looked very similar to this product. So when they brought out this Dyson Hot, I was intrigued to try it. And I just want to give you a quick look at the product box first of all. This is what the box looks like. Let me just stand up. And you've got a picture of the product on the front. Uh, air multiplier technology. Uh, long range heat protection, or projection I should say. Safety features, precise. No worry in burn smell. Cooling fan as well. And also complete control. And then let's just swing this round. So you can just see the graphics on the box. Fantastic. Let's put that out of the way. This is the product itself. This is what you want to actually see. Now I've got it plugged in, because I want to actually show you this working. But this is a fantastic product. The design is really nice. It's in a sort of gray um, color at the moment with this blue around the band here. You can also get it in white and silver as well. I want to give you a close up look actually. Let me just turn this on. So it's actually on now. I want to give you just a close up look at the display. So we've got a display down here which has got controls around it as well. And these are replicated on a remote control. This is the temperature it's currently set to. And you can put this up or down and it actually has a thermostat in it. So it will only come on when it falls below the temperature you've set. So that's what the sort of controls look like on the device. And then I just want to show you that. That's the remote. So that replicates the controls on the actual fan. So let's show you this up and running. And I'll just explain to you that what this does is that just in the back here um, is where the hot air comes out. And it uses a similar technology to what you get in those hand dryers. So you know when you go into a public convenience, you wash your hands, stick your hand in a dryer, and it really pushes out all of this hot air. Well, this channels it into a very fine groove around the back of the fan, and then channels that out into the room. So let me just first of all 
uh, turn the temperature up. You'll see this number go up as I, as I turn the temperature up and then it will kick in and you'll get to hear the actual uh, volume of uh, noise that it actually gives out while it's working. There we go, so that's working now. Now while that's running, you can also uh, oscillate the fan. So I can push another button on here and the fan will rotate. So it's rotating around, really cool. It's gonna come around and blow right here in a minute. And at any stage while this is oscillating, I can push the button again and stop it into a particular direction. So now that's facing direct at the camera. There's also another control on this remote for increasing the fan speed as well. Now at the moment, if I just look at here, it's on, it was on one, now it's on number two, and I can keep pushing this to make the fan even more powerful. So it's pushing this out uh, further into the room. I think it goes all the way up to number 10, so we're at its highest setting now. And it really does, I mean that is so nice and warm. And I've been testing this for about a week and a half now, and it does a fantastic job at warming the room up. Let's just turn that down. We go all the way back down to number one. And you can increase the temperature as well. We're on 24 then. We can go all the way up to 37. So that will maintain that heat in the room. And once it reaches that temperature, it will cut the uh, device off and turn it off. So let's turn it all the way down. And we go down until it actually switches off. So we're at 19. This is just fantastic. Now, the design and the technology you're gonna pay a little bit more for than a regular fan. This is, I think, costing round about 269 pounds in the UK. So it's not a cheap product, but it is absolutely fantastic. This is the Dyson Hot, the latest in technology for heating. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.